Okay, good morning everybody. Today we'll be discussing the relationship between work, force, and distance. To start off, the problem asks us about a pinball being launched by a spring straight into the air. We'll be creating an analogous situation inside the game using an aerial faith plate and a cube, and we can see it in front of us. This aerial faith plate is launching the cube straight into the air. The distance the cube reaches is directly proportional to the amount of work being done by the aerial faith plate. So we can easily calculate by using how high up the cube is going, how much work the aerial faith plate is actually doing. To start off, we need to know exactly how high the cube's going. To do that, I'll be using something called no clip mode, which will be described in the comments. So let's fly around the room a little bit, get a better view, and here we go. Okay, so we can see that our, air, our aerial faith plate is launching our cube almost exactly five units in the air, almost exactly. Uh, there's a slight variation, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that's going about five units in the air. So let's go ahead and drop to the ground and do a little bit of math. We know that work is equal to force times distance, and of course force is equal to mass times acceleration. We can plug in and find that work is equal to mass times acceleration times distance. Our mass is going to be 40 kilograms. That's actually given to us by the game for the mass of the cube. Our acceleration is 4.7 units per second squared, and our distance is 5 units. If you were paying attention, you'll notice that 40 kilograms is an SI unit, while everything else is in arbitrary game units. To convert to SI units, we'll be using one uh, one of those units, one panel uh, that you see in front of you, is equal to 2.4 meters. That easily gives us 11.25 meters per second squared for acceleration, and 12 meters for the height the cube reaches. Plugging in, that gives us a work is equal to 5,400 joules. Work is equal to 5,400 joules. Okay, that's great, that's a good answer, but that could be arbitrary for all we know. It could be more, it could be less, we don't know, because uh, we have no way of testing, at the moment, the mass of the cube. We're just assuming it's 40 kilograms because that's what the game tells us. However, we can use the amount of work being done to do a projectile motion problem. We know that the amount of work being done is equal to the initial kinetic energy of the cube. And if we know the initial kinetic energy of the cube, we can figure out the initial velocity of the cube. That is, the velocity of the cube immediately after it's launched by the aerial faith plate. We can use that velocity to do a projectile motion problem and test whether or not it's actually being launched uh, with a work or initial kinetic energy of 5400 joules. To do this next part, we're going to go downrange to our next experiment. In this experiment, we'll be launching our cube into this blue portal and out the orange portal. If you pay attention, the orange portal is about two and a half units above the ground. It's about two and a half units up. And I'm going to make my gun go away real quick. That'll be described in the comments. Um, and then the cube will be launched into the blue portal, out the orange one, and land somewhere down range. We can do some math and figure out. Now these two, in this case, these two aerial faith plates are exactly the same, and that's thanks to the magic of copying and pasting inside the uh, Portal 2 Puzzle Maker. In the game itself, every aerial faith plate is different, so the tests that we're doing today only apply to these two specific ones. Okay, let's do a little bit of math. So, like we said before, the amount of work is equal to the initial kinetic energy. That means that work is equal to one-half mv squared. To find v, we can rearrange, and we find that v is equal to the square root of two times work divided by the mass. Plugging in with what we know, uh, we find that our initial velocity should be 16 uh, 0.4 meters per second, or about 16 meters per second. Once again, we're in SI units. Now we need to go back into game units to make a distance that we'll be able to see inside the game world. Uh, 16 meters per second is equivalent to about 6.9 units per second. These are approximations. Okay, now we also need to find out how long the cube is going to be in the air. Like I said, it's at a height of two and a half units above the ground. Starting with the equation delta y is equal to one half gt squared, we find that time is equal to the square root of two times delta y divided by g, and if we plug in for what we know, we get about one second. So the cube should be in the air for about one second, and it should be going about 6.9 units per second. Our change in x is going to be v times t, or our velocity times time, that's how far the cube is going to go in the x direction, and that is about seven units. So, all things considered, when all is said and done, our cube should land seven units away. Let's go ahead and get everything set up, get down range, and see if this experiment's right. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this cube and put it right above the aerial faith plate and then freeze it in place. Okay, this is going to let me get down range so I can get in position to see where it's going to land. You'll notice in the background the other cube has stopped moving too. Now, hopefully, if all goes well, uh, the cube will be launched into the blue portal out the orange one. Uh, that is, if and only if I put the cube in the right place. So let's come down range and hopefully everything's in position. So if you're paying attention, 
and counting panels on the side you'll see that we are now at seven units we are seven units away from the orange portal so our cube should be landing right in front of us and the reason I said right in front of us and not exactly where we are first of all the cube feels air resistance it does feel friction so it will be slowed down a little bit and second of all the blue portal is slightly above our aerial faith plate meaning that by the time the cube reaches it it will have slowed down just a little bit but noticeably so our cube should be landing somewhere right in front of us okay let's give it a try BAM right there landed right in front of us right at about six units considering that the cube was slowed down by air resistance and the cube was slowed down uh, by being launched through the blue portal which is slightly above the aerial faith plate I would say that this is a very good indication uh, that the game is internally consistent the amount of work being done by the aerial faith plate is actually something uh, is actually a number that we can use in the game to figure out how far a cube might fly everything seems internally consistent at least at least at this point we could be wrong but for the time being it seems a uh, pretty safe bet Woo, okay, that's going to be it for today. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please comment on my blog, physicswithportals.com, or on the YouTube videos. I love to hear each and every comment, and I promise I'll respond to everyone. Uh, that's going to be it for today, guys. Take care.